All right, so today we're going to take a look at this antenna tuner, and this is an MFJ. It's the QRP pocket tuner, and it is model number 9201. And uh, it's a pretty small antenna tuner, but my pockets aren't big enough. Maybe in the cargo pants, uh, I could carry this thing around. But uh, I would typically put this in a bag or a box and use it that way. And I would want to be careful uh, maybe to put something on these BNC connectors to protect them, to make sure that I don't damage or bend them in any way. But if you take a look at this, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is the inductance control here. And so this is a T network, meaning you have a capacitor on either side, one for your transmitter, one for your antenna. And in the center of these, and we'll take this apart so you can see the insides, um, we have an inductor. And we'll take a look at that. There's a control here where you can put the device in bypass mode. So that would just be a direct connection through and the, any effects of the tuner would not be realized. And then you can move it to tune if you want to use the tuner to tune your specific situation. And so we're going to go ahead and we are going to demonstrate that as well. Um, that's really it plastic Durlin plastic I guess box this is some sort of metal but I don't think it is like uh, aircraft grade uh, aluminum <laughs> or uh, stainless steel or anything along those lines let's go ahead and crack this thing open and take a look at the inside and see what's doing before we get too far into the video I did want to say that I was contacted by the fine folks at MFJ and they asked if I would do a video review of this product and of course I said yes so they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review if you're the type of person who is triggered by that type of thing, go watch some cat videos. All right, disassembly was pretty easy. We just removed the four corner screws from the box and then we have our control panel here. So taking a look at it, you can see the bypass switch here and get an idea how it works. Everything is grounded through this metal uh, plate here. And then you can see our center conductors are connected to the bypass switch. And then here are our two variable capacitors. And if I turn this, you can probably see them meshing and unmeshing on the inside. So when I turn this to zero, it is fully meshed. Also for the inductor, the least inductance is letter L is my understanding. So this would be our T network. So we have one of these on either side, like I explained. And then we have in the center to ground, we have this toroidal core. And you can see that the core grounds right here to the frame. And it is a toroidal core and it is wrapped with magnet wire. There's some sort of insulative material on the top where it goes to this multi-position switch. So it's pretty basic. It is titled as a QRP tuner. But when I read through the manual, it says you can put up to 100 watts through this, and I don't believe that to be the case. So I don't know if that's a typo, or maybe this thing is capable of handling more power than I thought. Let's take a look. Here's the product page from MFJ, and I'll have this uh, link below where you can check it out. But you can see it's $79.95. Here is the tuner itself, and there's a link here for downloading the product manual. And when we flip over here, here is the product manual, and for some reason it's all over on the one side. But uh, if you take a look right here under introduction, it says you can operate 80 through 10 meters anywhere with a transceiver, use any coax feed or fed or random wire antenna. It's great for mobile and all this stuff. Here it says the MFJ uh, 9201 handles 100 watts of RF output and has a tuner bypass switch. Uh, like I said, I think I'm a little leery of 100 watts going through this thing. I, I just don't see those capacitors handling that. Uh, when I come down here and I take a look at the operation, there's a tuning procedure. Position the transmitter control on five, uh, the antenna control to zero, and then put the uh, switch into tune switch. And then it says adjust the inductor control for lowest deflection on reflected power, and then adjust the transmitter control for the lowest reflected power. And then once you get that to the lowest part, then you go over to the antenna control. And once you get that, you go back to the inductor switch and you can read through all this. Um, it does tell you here L is the lowest inductance setting. And just continually go through and tune the uh, device until you feel comfortable with it. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we have set up here. This coaxial cable is running to an antenna I have out in the backyard. And it is a 25-foot vertical with a 4 to 1 
Anan at the base of that antenna. We got about 75 feet of coax or so connecting that. Um, on the transmitter side, we are going to be using a nano VNA today as our test signal. The reason we're doing that is that we're actually going to show the nano VNA software so you can watch what happens as we make control changes to the controls on the actual tuner itself. Should be very exciting. All right, and then uh, when we take a look at the box, the adjustments that we need to make are here. We're going to start with our inductance on L. Then we have our transmitter set for 5. Uh, per the recommendation and then we have the antenna set on zero per the recommendation and currently we are in bypass mode okay we're set up to do this test this is the screen for nano vna saver it's just the swr chart there's other things that you can see there but i didn't think it was important to show that for this video uh, we have the tuner set up and ready to go and what i want you to notice is that we have a red marker marker number one and it's around 14.074 which is the ft8 frequency on 20 meters and that is going to be our frequency of interest for this exercise for the video and then here's our tuner we are in bypass mode once I turn the tuner on, you can see some changes take place there, and that is because we have some settings already on here, the recommended starting settings. So this is a continuous sweep, so it's going to continue sweeping as we make these adjustments. The first thing it said to do was to tune for the lowest inductance. So there you can see it jump up, and it went up a little bit more, even more. Let me continue to change this. There we go, a nice drop there. Okay, I believe that's gonna be our lowest point of inductance. Let's go one more and let a sweep run. I think we were best on C. Okay, and then now what it said to do was to adjust the transmitter side. And it's starting to go down a little bit. Now we will adjust the antenna side. And these are very fine adjustments and so when we take a look at that marker that's probably the best that we can do with this particular setup hopefully that uh, shows this product and what it can do and a little bit about how to use these manual tuners if you have any questions comments suggestions or recommendations go ahead and post them below and i'll do my best to respond as always thanks for watching